You're listening to Opinions and Beer. Stone Cold Steve Austin knows that the Opinions and Beer podcast exists in this world. My sex act, crazy bike. Oh. No, bro, I can't drop out of the scene for 14 months and show up as a co-host. I'm a fucking donkey show right in the middle of that. They always say to review IPAs last. The bitterness can destroy your palate for other beer. Beer and opinions, opinions and beer. Two guys and another guy. Will never happen again. Hello. Welcome to Opinions and Beer. I'm your host, Adam. Today, we have our other hosts. We have King Violet. We do. He's not lying. I am here. <laughs> we, we have the most controversial figure ever. In- all ever of the internet ever ed ray 1416 ever yeah shut up ever <laughs> oh my god now, before you continue <laughs> i want i want to make a a, a very very well, I, wait I, wait wait i need to comment on the video if you are watching this in video form you may notice you see the screen around us the screen today we're doing a throwback episode we are doing we are doing a classic commercial react. <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, like those are so like uh, general and cliche. There's so many commercial reactions on YouTube. I thought that we stopped that for a reason. What? No, <laughs> no, no. But I want to comment on something way more important. Okay. All right. Are these two beers right here? Are They're they the both? Same. They're both lined up in the same way. All right. The tabs are perfectly aligned. They're both facing the same <laughs> way. But if you look right here, all right, they're not the same. All right, they weren't canned the same, and that is upsetting me. <laughs> like, you can see the label. That means there's, hand, yeah. there's craftsmanship. You can see the label on this one, but you can't see the label on this one. But they're lined up fucking perfect. That means it's not factory. Someone hand did that. Oh, bro, that's deep. That's some fucking, that's some craft beer shit right there. There's some value in that. So you already know what we're going to do today. We're doing commercial reacts for that episode. I want to bring back to my childhood my favorite breakfast. Wait, wait. wait. I want it. I want the. Oh I, yeah, I, we're doing this. I want the sound. The, want, this is very soundy. A soundy episode. This is untitled all about sound. art. Untitled Art is a brewery that also teams up with other breweries. So they, they teamed up with Angry Chair Brewing to make this beer. Um, untitled Art. I think is more of a is more of a distru- I can't it's kind of hard to place. Untitled Art is a unsung hero that's bringing out they have I get I think I guess they have their own beers but they're kind of more like a factory that is able to help lower breweries mass produce their beers. Does it make sense? <laughs> Untitled Art Wait. helps smaller breweries <coughs> get out mass there. produce their beer without mass. without not get us, being get it to beer. us. But without uh, is craft beer. Yeah, but I'm saying it's it, they're able to. Uh, I'm, when I say mass, their, I don't say I don't mean mass produce, yeah. and I'm sure you don't either. Uh, they're able to produce their beer more, so people who are afraid of mass producing because they want to stay a craft beer get their craft beer out there. Or people that's hard to get. If, if like they if they're in Colorado and there's some small fucking brewery that just can't and afford to mass produce it, it's basically like uh, they say hey. We'll produce your beer and get it out to Texas. It's kind of like like the movie industry, like production companies making movies. Like this company I think makes so. a movie. I, I think so. Or like distribution companies for production companies. Like this shit's distributed. So you look by Disney, but well, made this by says this, it, and that. this says it's brewed and canned by Untitled Art, but sold by Angry by. Chair Brewing Company in Waukee, Wisconsin. So, what does that mean? It just means that uh, deals were made, bro. Yeah, deals were made for this. This is Angry Chair Brewing. With Someone signed a contract. Teamed up with Untitled Art. This is a loaded French toast imperial stout coming in at 11% alcohol. alcohol. This is an imperial stout with maple syrup, cinnamon, and milk sugar. Look, I just hope it fails completely. I want to say that. I love French. You don't like French toast? What's your favorite breakfast? Uh, French toast. Well, then what the hell? Why do you want it to fail? Because I don't want to taste my fucking favorite breakfast in my fucking beer. All right? I want fucking beer-flavored beer. We've been through this. Throwback. 
Oh. Oh, oh, that's called a money shot. Sprayed on me. <laughs> <laughs> Keenan loves his porn. Oh, Ke- my God. Keenan does love his porn. Keenan- I don't know where that came from. Oh, Allie, you know what a money shot is. Oh, 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 no, you can't oh, even, you can't even, you just admit it to knowing what a money shot it. is. Yeah, because I heard you it. You can't be like, Venus. bro, I don't watch porn. Ed like, Ray, someone I just heard it casually, Someone just casually says money shot and he mentions Ed Ray, porn. your brother told us about Socko. Socko? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Socko? Mr. Socko. Oh, I was like, Socko? I mean, like, that reminds me of, like, Rule 67, how there's porn for everything. It's like, yeah, I've seen Socko porn. Did I, <laughs> did I tell you last time we were on that he's actually on porn? Who? Ed Ray? Ray? Like, you're a porn star? When? We admitted it on... No, we talked about it when you drank that wine. And he also thought it was the 90s? No. We, I was like, bro, that was like 2008. So, so if you go back to episode two, you go back to episode two of our Opinions and Beer Fest, part two of Opinions and Beer Fest, Ed Ray did porn. I'm sorry. I know I was supposed to wait. You're in it. <laughs> wait, I'm, I'm Look, gonna... I was down on my luck. <laughs> he paid me I forgot to tell, 50 bucks. I forgot to tell Keenan. That I was in a porn? That he's in a porn of. Oh, my God. That's, like, kind of groundbreaking for me. I, I would want to know about that so I could share it endlessly on every platform. <laughs> and I didn't Kenan. even. Kenan, I'm sorry. I forget. That. I, well, I, 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 forget I forget that you're in the video. I, I am in. Is it a very <laughs> lewd and graphic pornography? <laughs> no, I forget you're in the video. No, it's Ed Ray fucking a tree. And you're screaming at him. I put it all on the porn sites. Oh my god, that is beautiful. There's probably some pansexual motherfuckers that jacks off to that nightly. (laughs) It's got some. No, no, don't get me wrong. It's it's got like like 300 views. It's not a huge demographic, (laughs) but there's one guy out there, you know. He's like, that's a fucking sexy tree, bro. Yeah. Hey, it's for the NATO sexuals out there. No, well. Okay, and then if you type in NATO dash sexual, you can find. Oh, that's the thing. Oh, at that point, dude, the definition of pansexual. Is being able to be attracted to almost anything. Oh, really? You know, like uh, uh, Deadpool's a pansexual. That's why they have that shot of him jacking well, off to a unicorn. I want to tell- Shut up, let me finish. All right. Because he's like pansexually attracted yeah. to unicorns. Okay. Same. So, like, you don't need, after that, you don't need any more specific fucking terms. If you're attracted to a tree, you're not a nature sexual. You're just a fucking pansexual. Calm down. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> the only reason why I did it is because I was trying to get him to be just like his hero. Oh, your hero is a porn star too? Yeah. He banged a teddy bear or something. Or, or sex doll. Oh man, I thought you were who, doing this. Who like, banged a sex hey, doll? He banged Brie Olson. No, who's the YouTuber that banged a sex doll? Either? Chris Chan. There we go, Chris Chan. Was it at least a porn star sex doll? <laughs> like the ones that are like modeled after the porn star? How would I know? I've never seen it. You talked about it in the episode. Uh, you can't talk about shit without fact checking, bro. We're facts and beer here. Opinions and beer. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's totally okay for you to uh, talk about something without fact checking it. Anyway, you dumbass. Uh, we we got ahead of ourselves. Let's go ahead and smell this. Beer. I am now. I'm just like extremely curious to what. Oh it my god! It smells like French toast. I know. I, I taste it smell- prematurely. I'm ah! sorry. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna. This is why you do not give an alcoholic taste it. beer on a platform called Opinions in Beer. And he said it, not me. But no, it's okay because we're Opinions in Beer. Now, if we're Facts in Beer, that would have been a problem. It's good, though. Oh, it's too good. <laughs> I'm giving it like a four. You can't say it's too good. That is good. That, I know. It tastes like oh, French toast. I forgot my It parts. tastes like French right, toast. Here, Try it. Here's the problem with uh, too good a beer. Oh. Wait, wait. Ooh. Oh, you don't, you don't want it? You know, all right. This is a good beer. Here's the problem with this beer a- like this. All right, now, did you buy this in a six-pack? It came in a four-pack. A four-pack for $24. There you go. All right, there, there's either, like, there's so many problems with that. Every way you approach it, all right? It co- I mean, it costs a lot of money to put this much flavor in beer. The more, all right, no one wants just four beers for one. 
I don't know. I get it. Well, they sell, they sell stuff in four packs, six like, packs. So four, uh, four, I well, it's sixteen ounce. They sell they sell a lot of these sixteen ounce cans. And I packs. constantly have to deal with the, with the the problems of being a beer connoisseur and a fan of drinking. <laughs> All right, if you're a beer connoisseur and you go all out and say it again, you spent twenty dollars on a four pack. Because it's supposed to be t- enjoy it, just taste it. Exactly, and, and you're a beer connoisseur. I guess that's what. All it right, is. listen, listen, li- like, okay. hear me out. Imagine this scenario, this experience. You're a beer connoisseur. You've been doing opinions in beer for too fucking long to go out and buy a thirty pack of Bush. All oh, right, yeah. no, there's no going. Kind of like because opinions and weed, which I've not been doing for so, I've not bought Reggie. Since I started Opinions and Weed, I cannot stand Reggie now. And I've always, now I've already, I've branched off. But I'll get back to my uh, my point, I promise. <laughs> I stopped buying Reggie because I was so spoiled by the great weed that I was smoking for Opinions and Weed. And it's, it's got to be dro with, with Opinions and Weed. Yeah. Oh, as, as no, we have a fucking Reggie episode because of Christmas tree uh, weed. that You have to be a stoner to know anything about that. But anyways, uh, point is... It's the same thing, dude. We're not doing episodes over fucking Bush or Bud Light and shit, all right? Right. And it's and it's like the more you become a connoisseur, the more you can't go back to that, all right? But I'm not I'm trying to drink, I'm trying to get drunk, I'm trying to drink a lot. I don't want to be like four beers and done. Yeah. So it's like, all right, oh, that's a great beer. I want another one. Oh, well, bro, there's not another one. It's twenty dollars for four of them. We don't drink them all. <laughs> that's unacceptable. You know. <laughs> I, I make sure to stick one in the fridge before yeah. I bring it. I'll be honest with you. One at home. Oh, absolutely. For your own personal <laughs> I mean, consumption. They're expensive. Exactly. I, I want it for my own. Yeah. Just to hang out and just relax and just drink one of these expensive ass beers. I, I just say, when we do review Bush, I will put 20 in my fridge and only bring 10. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, uh, you, I love it. I like this. I beer. give it a, I give it a four. It's like drinking French toast. Oh, yeah, it is. You didn't like it, Ed Ray? What'd you think about it? Tasted like Coca-Cola. Where's the beer? All right. I, I understand the second part. Where's the fucking beer? That's almost. I guess it's kind But of these, these beers, like, I hate. That's just it. Dude, this is like a. This could be convoluted. They, they used. You know what, though? They used the cinnamon well. Oh, there is cinnamon in there. Dude, it's straight French toast, man. They it's use, like that. Well, some, some, this some. tastes just as much as French toast as that sour tasted just like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> sand, not peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I was really blown back <laughs> by the fact that there's yeast in beer. You could taste the bread. Milk in this. sugar. And uh, 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 they sweeten uh, the dude, damn thing? That, that might have raised it from a four to a five if you could taste yeast more. Because of course, French bread's made out of yeah. French what? French toast. No, French toast is made out of yeast. All right, yeast and bread. When we oh, yeah, or you, you picked up what I was putting. Down. <laughs> All right, uh, point is, we we tasted that peanut butter and jelly stout. Sourdough. And, I'm sorry. <laughs> we tasted that peanut butter and jelly stout, and you could taste the bread. All right, it was like drinking a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It was not a peanut butter and jelly. St- uh, flavored beer. It was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich flavored beer. You could taste the fucking bread, and that blew my goddamn mind. Whew. Yeah. Gosh. All right, now, but you cannot taste any yeast in this. You cannot taste any bready flavor in this, and that would have raised my opinion. But if if you're a beer fucking it's, hating it's, it's beer drinker, in the back. No, well, not as me. it sits. Oh, I don't know. I didn't taste it. I mean, no. I mean, it took a while to get there. I, I had, I had me. I hate. That, I had to sit here and wait for it. To this could be misleading. Like to beer, it's like I, I, it's good for like, it's getting beer. It could get a, someone who hates to taste the beer. I, I think I had this. This uh, is real popular in our area right now. Well, I have this opinion about every right, single crap super beer. fucking flavory beer. So I'm like, oh, I fucking hate the flavor of beer. But you get you hand me an angry chair, fucking French toast. I'll drink that bitch down. Of course you will. It tastes like fucking French toast. It doesn't. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, like, I like beer. I'm giving it a high rating. I'm giving it a freaking. You know what? When we do opinions of beer, I get excited that I'm gonna get to taste some good beer. But I'm not tasting good beer. I'm getting to taste some fucking French toast. I'm. 
thinking back though, thinking back at some of the other beers, it may I almost want to give it a nine, but it may be an eight. What's the alcohol percentage? Eleven. It better get if if it ain't gonna taste like beer, it might as well. It better. Oh get yeah, it's ele- up. I mean, it's eleven percent. Yeah, it's pretty stout. I mean, damn. It is a stout, right? We're yeah, stouting it yeah, up, right? dude. It's, it's an imperial stout. Yeah. God damn it! I want to taste an imperial stout. My imperial stout. <laughs> what? They Quit loaded it. They loading. Lo- <laughs> you mean I'm not gonna taste a beer flavored beer till January? Oh am I? Oh no. Unless, unless like one just happens to stroll by, uh, it's like January's gonna come around and be so fucking happy. It's but crazy like, stout month, man, dude. And w- with the contradictory of that, we, I swear, of the three of us, you know, what? we might drink a porter. How's of, that? of the three of us, <laughs> I swear to God, I'm the most Christmassy, Christmas loving motherfucker out of. I love Christmas more than y'all two combined. I, gotta, oh I God, guarantee I it. Gotta yeah. I got crazy. He just pulls it out of nowhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wanted to end the shot, but we gave up. No, no. But seriously, I'm the most Christmassy loving motherfucker more than both of y'all combined. Yeah. And this is like, uh, I, for one, French toast isn't extremely marketed with Christmas or anything. Oh man, I wish they saw it. That I think that's so well, like cinnamon kind of is. There's something about the holidays and cinnamon. It goes hand in hand. I think they sold out of that French toast beer too. I'm so pissed now because I want some more for fucking Thanksgiving. <sighs> Not pissed, but I mean like <sighs> I could get some more for Thanksgiving. I'm sorry, that was random. I'm just thinking about it in my head. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm no, like, this I'm is picking a- up, like I said, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Uh, I mean, I, I, it's, yeah, it, it's it'd be great. No, no, I mean, yeah, it wouldn't be bad. It'd be festive, but again, French toast isn't. Uh, Market it with Thanksgiving either. I know. I'm just saying because I, I, I like to bring weird beers for Thanksgiving now over to uh, Lauren's parents. And like this would have been a good one. Anyways, moving on. We rated this. I, I'm going to, no, I'm going to give straight up give it, I'm going to give it a nine. I'm, I'm going to push it because I, French toast. Fuck. My favorite. Bro, that's not fair. You're giving it a nine because it French. tastes like French toast. I French toast is my favorite breakfast. Hey, it's my favorite breakfast too. That's why, that's I, give why it, I give it a nine. Why I'm giving it a low number. I know. They're cheating. Moving on to today's segment. We've got six videos to watch, react to. You ready for this? Today we're talking about you know what you know what came out recently at uh everybody? New Mutants. PS5 and the new Xboxes. And, and everyone's suck. already blowing vape smoke into their Xboxes. What? And uh, Microsoft had to actually put out a personal, like, a official statement to the customers to stop blowing vape smoke into their Xboxes. I guess it does something cool. <laughs> like, I, I guess it, it's got to be, like, ambiance. By, by the way, <laughs> check out our sponsor, repsports.com. Type in O-A, O-A, top O-A beer. In the promo code, uh, we are sponsored by Ray's Energy Drink. Ray's, R-A-Z-E, but you go to repsports.com, R-E-P-P sports.com. Uh, do, do, buy whatever you want. Type in O-A beer in the promo code to get, a, I believe it's a 10% discount. And hell yeah, do that. Yeah, all right. So let's talk <laughs> about Ray's Energy Drink for a moment. Oh my God. No, I want to because I want to know. Where did you get your raise? Upon sponsorship, did they send you raise? No, this is a beginner sponsorship. All right, so you literally bought those raise from the store. I did. Where did you buy them? The corner store. Pirate Stop. All right, so it's uh, it, it's, I think only Pirate Stop has it. Oh, I was gonna say it's <laughs> probably uh, it's probably a roll I of, randomly seen it. It's roll of the die, dude. Like I, I randomly seen it when I applied for the beginner sponsorship. Roll the D twenty, man. And when uh, you got it. When you walk through a corner store, that corner store can have any array of energy drinks. You, yeah. you gotta, you just. I was just personally wondering where I can get some raised energy drinks. Probably and, at, uh, that question was not at answered a weird at a weird episode. corner store. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a roll of the D twenty. D twenty. Anyways, we're getting on today's episode. We're gonna be react. Uh, PS five came out. Yeah, it did. New Xbox came out. Yeah, it did. We're gonna throw back to the old school. PS2 and Xbox. No, even further than that. Old ass shit. We're going to watch. We're going to commercial react. We're going to react to some commercials of old school video game stuff. You ready for this? And yeah. you're, you're going to be well, like, dude, did you know Atari the Atari? The, the, dude, their place, all kinds of stuff. 80s, 90s. You're going to love it. 
You ready for this 80s, 90s commercials? I didn't even know video games had commercials prior to the 2000s. First commercial. Be blown away, oh, man. shit. God damn it. We, uh, I think I remember Crazy Taxi's commercial. We, 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 uh, we blocked my thingy. I'm trying to get to it. Ah! Other bookmarks. Commercials. Oh, no. It's hiding behind me. Okay, let me put me over here. We'll this episode is not live, right? No, it's not. Good. The magic of editing will come to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, other bookmark, commercials, first one. Okay. Oh, my God. I fucking remember this. Oh, wait, wait. I, should I minimize us for this? Yeah, let's minimize hey, us. Let's minimize us. Hi, video. All right. We'll go to the beginning. Everyone be quiet and try to listen to it and we'll react to it. Now, when you buy the Sega Genesis that comes with Sonic 1, you'll get Sonic 2 absolutely free. Sonic 2 handles stubborn stains, embarrassing bald spots, no problem. It even slices and dices, makes thousands of julienne fries. But wait, you can play it too. This free Sonic 2 is a $54.99 value. You get two Sonics for the price of one. Sonic 2 fits easily into any tackle box. Made from a space-age polymer plastic for years of family fun. And pets love it too. Buy the Sega Genesis that comes with Sonic 1 and get Sonic 2 free. Act now. Wiener Dog Sweater, sold separately. Oh my god, for one, uh, so many things come to mind. Okay. Uh... Was every commercial back in the day like a fucking infomercial? <laughs> like, did the infomercial style get their commercials from the uh, commercials of the fucking Maybe. late 80s, early 90s? How odd is that, though? Two. If uh, not, hey, $54. then that was straight up a Sonic. $54 for the Genesis and, and two, two games. games. That's the cost of a Fuck. new game. I know. Anyway, and what are your thoughts on this commercial and well, first of all you both are wrong about the whole sonic 2 thing and the price of the genesis the price of the genesis back then if i wasn't mistaken was 179 dollars oh. plus the sonic one game again but sonic if, 2, if you bought that particular sega genesis while sonic 2 was released you got sonic 2 it was sonic 2 was 54 dollars 99 cents itself in 1992 but you two took it out of context, so I had to point it out. Oh, wait, so what do you get? Well, for $179, they're saying the game's $52. The Sega Genesis plus the Sonic, but then the Sonic 2 became a bonus for buying it during Christmas of 1992. Oh, would you have bought this for 1992? No, yeah, I totally did. <laughs> you did to buy this? Yeah. Sonic 1 and 2? Yeah. I had that bundle. My mom got it for me. What are, your thought, what are your thoughts about the marketing scheme where, they, where he shows you can chop shit? Oh, my God, dude. It makes me feel like, oh, <laughs> what happened to commercials? This shit's fucking hilarious. It fits in a tackle box. Yeah, what the yeah. hell? That was, without a doubt, Sega's most effective marketing look, tool. They, they, look, ball spots. Move. Chopping. Fix it for, yeah, ball spots. Chopping. <laughs> They're chopping. Chop so many celery with this. <laughs> So, oh, it also has a game on it. I know, right? yeah. I will say this, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is the greatest uh, Sonic game of all time. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. It's yeah, the they, they found the grounding. They weren't burnt out yet like they were on 3. Yeah. And they found the grounding unlike they did on 1. So it's the, it's the, it's the Goldilocks. Yeah? It's the Goldilocks. Sonic 2, so good. That's, that's, a, that's a fun commercial that to watch. That was. That's a fun. It's just called crazy. Covered ball spots. What happened to commercials, man? That sounds crazy. I don't know. They are just now starting to get funny again. They really, yeah, I can see what you're saying. I see what you're putting down. Like, yeah, I've seen some commercials. It's like, good for you, bro. That was fucking great. All right, let's watch this one. I'm going to minimize us again. Ads, 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 ads. All right, All right, this Toyota commercial is lame. I don't know. Was it, was it? <laughs> Introducing oh Alien vs. Predator for the 64-bit Atari Jaguar. Oh, you might not want to play it alone. <gasps> Mom. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, man. Something's going to One, that was creepy. Then that was scary. Then that was creepy again. Like, that's an over affectionate relationship. If your mom's just, like caressing on your neck, <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh, all right. hey, dear, how you playing so, video games? Is that a good time? So, the, and he's just like, he's not even like overly disturbed, like she does it all the time. He's just like, mom, 
so and this is gay. like, oh, my mom's just ca- lovingly caressing my neck again. So that was a commercial for Alien vs. Predator on the Atari Jaguar. Oh, the Atari and Jaguar. And I thought, I thought N64's whole thing were, or was that they were like, they just hit 64-bit graphic uh, technology. Well, here's the difference but here we are. the Jaguar and the 64. The Jaguar came out first. I think as far back as 1989, while the... Well, that was a 92 commercial. Well, anyway, <laughs> what I was trying to say was it came out before N64, but N64 Obviously. oversaw everything, and they did it right. Nintendo did it right compared to Atari, because Atari was very lazy. And the other thing that pissed me yeah, off about the that. Atari Jaguar was a, it was a $700 oh. console. Ah, and you, Jesus. And, yeah, and you had pads. You had number pads instead of a directional pad or a control stick. What? Wait, so a $700 console whenever a Sega Genesis is being sold for 100 bucks, and you get two games? $179, yeah. I mean, that's still $700 to $100. How much would that be now? Seven hundred dollars. That's like a thousand dollars. That's think like- hey, all right. What it was is uh before video games became an established art. All right, there's oh, these yeah, companies. Man, they're like, would you right, pay seven hundred dollars? No, the closest thing. Companies to like being- Atari were like, look, there's those these extremely obsessed and depraved, really geeky motherfuckers in these mothers' basements. And uh, probably, we're going to take advantage of them. That would probably be Atari Jaguar. Why Why did the Atari Jaguar fail? Is it because of the price? Not only was it because of the price. And the marketing and the laziness. The, and the... It was also because of the controllers and because many of the games were not overseen properly by Atari and their or anyone. developers. Yeah, I mean, it, it, looks yeah. like, it looks like their only game they, they really worked on was AVP. Look, there's... there's <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, there's there jokes. Games about the- there's jokes about how poorly it was all put together. There's an entire sitcom called Code Monkeys, and, and like half their humor comes to how lazy... Uh, it comes from in the 80s, like how lazily video games were put together. Yeah. Like a company would go to their video game designers and be like, look, do this. And they would leave and they would come back and they would gather the, the uh, end product and without looking over anything, mass produce it, mass sell it. Jeez. All right, that's what happened with E.T. Like George Lucas sold the rights to make an E.T. video game for Atari. And then uh, Atari hired a company to make this a video game. And these companies hired video game designers. To make this video game. And this company is like basically, hey, make this video game. And the video game designers are like, yeah, we'll do that. And the, and, and the company was like, fucking great. End the conversation. I'll see you when you're done. <laughs> All right. And they got done with the ET product. And they're like, hey, this is the ET video game. And the company, I don't fucking know the company. That's what I keep saying. The company. <laughs> All right. Obviously. I, I'm sure you picked Ed Ray, who's the company? What are you talking about? That made the ET video ET game. ET video game. Atari. Oh, Atari themselves made it. That's even sadder. All right. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, if you watch the ET oh, reviews. Yeah, yeah, I remember like the that. huge Atari symbol right in the corner of the game. Yeah, Atari right. was given five weeks to develop the Oh, that game. had a lot to do with it, too. But point is, is, Atari went to video game developers like, hey, make this game. Video game developers are like, we'll fucking do that. They came back five weeks later like, did you make the game? They're like, we fucking did. Here it is. And Atari was like, great. They fucking mass sold it. They never even looked at the product. Well, the reason why they couldn't was because they were rushed to get it out there by Christmas of 1982. Yeah, because they wanted to. The they wanted... average video game back then took six months to program on those eight bit computers. Now it's like fucking years. Jeez. Well, and again, and that's... it's like well, what you because, got, and that's because it was not a respected art. It was some geeky niche bullshit. Edward, what are your thoughts on Alien being able to operate a lady's arm? Oh, that was a little creepy. I think that, <laughs> that was. I think that was the best uh, marketing tool that and, Atari would come up with. And, and I'm sure, like, back then, because, like, I, I don't know, times are different or what, but it's, like, creepy that he thought it was just, like, natural that his mom's <laughs> caressing his neck. I know, right? And then, like, the camera pans out, and it's an alien arm holding the mom's <laughs> arm, caressing the dude's neck, and this is all natural. And that was, that was just unsettling. All right, let's, uh, let's go to uh, video three. Let's go to video 
three bookmarks quizzes oh my god you're seeing all my stuff you're seeing future episodes oh my god oh my god you're seeing my porn tabs right, here we go machine has appeared in homes across america double and redouble his power you gotta plug shit in this shit plug this in your sega times more than super nes hey yo there is no 32-bit super nes are we gonna see the games or what show me is it a converter it's a converter to play thank you no, play that again. I don't right, know well, what the fuck again. I just watched. Play it again. Play it again. And I'll shut up this time. Machine has appeared in homes across America. Double and redouble his power. Thirty-two. Six times more powerful than 3 do All right, baby. Forty times more than Super NES. Hey, yo, there is no 32-bit Super NES. Are we gonna see the games or what? Show me. Thank you. I, I still don't know the fuck I just watched. <laughs> okay. Ed Ray. Well, I'll go ahead and explain. Was that what? Sega CD? No, no, no. It was another add on to the Sega Genesis called the 32X. It was an add on where it, it brought the to games to 32 bit. Yeah. And basically, what you do is you put the add on. You plug it in like you're putting in a cartridge or something. Yeah, we all see and Then that. you put the plug in. And uh, yeah, the, the, the game and the add-on. Yeah. And anyway, what it does is you get to play certain games in 32-bit, like what you just saw with Doom and then Space Harrier. Instead you know, the of what is the uh, the default bit of Sega? The what? <laughs> what is, it advances is up to 32-bit. How many bits is it prior to that? It was 16 bits, you know, for the oh. Sega CD as well. God damn, I thought they were more than that. I thought it's like, you know, I thought, hey, were, I thought well, Sega was already what, at 32 what was, bits. What was that competing against it said? The 3DO or no, something? The, yeah, the, the 3DO, NES. let me, yeah, the 3DO, the Super Nintendo, and I forgot what else. But I want to go ahead and just point out about the 3DO. The 3DO was a $400 gaming no! back in 1993, which was too expensive at the time, just like the $700 Atari Jaguar. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons why the 3DO no, was expensive. Of Wait, what, what did, uh, who, who made the 3DO? I, I think it was Panasonic that made the 3DO. So wait, Panasonic know. made a video game console? They oh, may yeah. have... That's but weird. I, I know Philips. Sort of made I know Philips made the CDI, which had one of the worst Mario games ever made. Yeah, did they all try to get on that bandwagon back in the day? <laughs> like literally, I wasn't making a joke. Mitsubishi made a video game console. Jeez, and like, I can't tell you shit about it, but it happened. Yeah. <laughs> so three. So the, the so basically, but is it why was Sega trying to compete with these weird um, companies? Well, because. Uh, the Sega Corporation thought it was time to evolve from the Sega Genesis, while Sega of on America the CD, CDs wanted, just came out. Is what happened. Well, Sega of America wanted to focus on the Sega Genesis and then move to something much better. And Sega was transitioning from the Genesis to the Saturn, but in between, they wanted to try these add-ons, and clearly, they were not marketed right, and the games were not developed right, and that's why they failed. Were these new games? Did they did they create new games for the add-ons? No. Well. Some of them they did, but most of these add-ons were actually ports of either arcade classics. The whole point was to take all these games that you already have and make them more advanced. Which is like I don't, I don't. How to do say, that? I don't, yeah, I don't understand that technology. Like, I don't know. What the, it's like what you got in that cartridge you, is you, what you got in that cartridge. Do you think the '90s were more advanced than today, but they just didn't have the technology? I mean, I mean, in terms do you think of like the term you just said, kind of contradicts itself. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they they I know, I know ability. what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Like, it was, no, no, the better way they could have been. No, no. It's like they could have been more advanced. They were just not sophisticated enough. They were not sophisticated, marketable, and they did not have the proper oversight that they do I, now. I just feel like, like if you put you, 90s logic with today's I mean, technology. Do you, I mean, because because let's think about it. Back in like. What's weird is I feel like a lot of a lot of things that come out today have already come out, but it's almost like they stopped making it. Then they figured to, out how to do it and did it right and reproduce. And is re that what's going it. on? Because like waterproof, like because I feel like waterproof. I was say, name an example. Like waterproof cameras was a '90s thing. 
And it failed horribly. Every waterproof camera actually ruined in the water. Oh, did it really? No, I thought that's where you're going with that. No, but and now they're no, but they slowly. No, they I'm saying. Can. I'm saying. I'm saying. I, I think that might be like one of the flaws of capitalism that like maybe they they take away stuff. Hey, and, well, listen. Maybe there's they, no flaws of capitalism. Shut up. Maybe you they fucking socialists. Do you not think that sometimes companies will take things away to later add them back as like premium content? Is that a flaw? Or is that actually an advantage and it's called freedom? Well, they could have kept it advancing. Instead, they're like, oh, we advanced too far. They had the freedom Let's take capitalism away. not to do that. I'm just saying. Enough. Certain, I support capitalism. Certain and things like that. Oh. All right. They had, no, they had the ability to be smarter than the consumer and to resell you I, shit. They've already been I just, selling you from I just, the '90s. I just feel and like you buy it and they make a fortune. I and you feel, think that's wrong because you were you found hey, out that you're dumb. No, and they got smart. Listen, they got rich off of you being dumb, and you're upset. But that's capitalism, baby. Listen, there is a period in time in the middle where technology stopped progressing, and now Started. it's like coming back, but like more expensive. You understand? Like it stopped. There's a point in time where it's like this should right, outside outside of the video game. It, it has to be outside of the video. I know what you're talking about. No, no, you're about but to the see. The video game industry no. is not. You're about to see. That. You're about to see something. Oh my god! I have a commercial. The graphics are so sexy. No, I have a commercial for a '90s thing that was ahead of its time, and you know not see it now. But guess what? You see it in iterations of what the future would be like. So let's bring that up. I think. I think that. I, but you're still talking about what I'm talking about. I feel. Is things that How? failed in the nineties. I'm gonna and minimize. Re-released them with better technology. I'm in going the to uh, minimize us, so I can bring. Don't in. you fucking minimize me. I'm minimizing us. If you're watching this on video, I just minimized us. We're gonna get a big max. Bro, I will not be minimized. minimized. And I think it is. It is next. Chromebook starts. Oh yeah, the nineties commercial you wanted to show is Chromebook. No, here we are. Have we done the right thing? If it isn't our place to ask, it could be our legacy. Yes, the impact on society would be irreversible. Right We've now, dedicated our lives to science. Which means that we understand progress. Maybe this is just another step. More like a leap. If we are going forward, who's going to test it? Yo, dudes, anybody got a video game? Is the world ready for the Interactor? The world's first interactive game vest that lets you feel the action. What have we done? Okay, it's, okay. it's what I said. So here we are. They're not re-releasing technology and like selling it to you. Like, you fool, this has been out for years. Look. No, they're, they're making it better. And you're talking about like the Wii But I'm saying it's stop. This is the 90s. Yeah. And we are fucking, what year is this? It's 2020. And we just barely 90s. took a step up what, from what that. What year is this? 93? Yeah, and they, they already, they had that Dude, back then. but listen. Dude, no, you're not. They you should be here. Did you own that? Did you? Of course not. You know why? <laughs> because that was a failing gimmick, and it's like it no, goes back to no, capitalism. I read. I read what happened was that was that it took like thirty batteries or something. <laughs> it's always some. That's the nineties. It's always something like that. Like they had a good. It's what I said, and you what? dismissed okay, it. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not finished. Can I finish, sir? Can I finish? Okay, I'm finished. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, no, but for real. All right. It's what I said, and you're like, no, that's not the case. But then you literally showed that that is literally the case. All right, it's they release technology that they know is not ready, but they want the fucking money, fucking capitalism, all that shit. They fucking force it out there, and then it's developed over time, and that becomes like the fucking Wii or whatever the hell you're talking, about. And, whatever you want to compare that to with today's technology with the motions and. <laughs> anyway, have you ever heard of the Aura Interactor? No. You no, heard it? That's how so, much of a failure it was. So Aura Andre knows everything. No, so the Aura Interactor was something that it was like it was this vest. Revolutionary. It was this, it was this vest that you could feel the action of games. So if you played oh, more, so if you like that, if you, an if you play, oh, 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 if you played Mortal oh, Kombat, it takes thirty batteries. If you take, if you, if you, if you play Mortal Kombat, so you could feel the chest. The, exactly. You would heal. You would feel the punches and stuff. They that, get to bring so that back. It was animatronic right, style not, gaming. It was, I it was in Ready Player One. I'm a, oh, that's a movie. It's not in any fucking video game. It's right futuristic, now. but they they could have kept. It. I see. They what you're stopped. Saying. I misunderstood. I thought that had something to do with motion. Like you, no the character with this vest. No, you felt it. 
I like that. That's what I'm saying. Why do they stop? They stop and then they like, oh, well, to be, to be fair, well, technically, did we not have VR? To be fair, did we, not, did we have VR in the 90s? Oh, yes, we yeah, did. but it was such a failure. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's not a failure. I'm saying it stopped until for 30 years. Yeah, like, it was such a failure that that's how long it took for 30 like, years. Look, it took, it failed so bad in the 90s. It took 30 years, or, or it hasn't been 30 years since the 90s. It's been fucking 20. All right. Uh, 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 the 90s, you're talking about the BR in the 80s. It's been 30 years. It's since 20 years. It's 80s. exactly 30 years. Since the 90s? Yeah. It's been exactly 20 years since 1999. No. 20 90s. Years. Well, okay, oh, it's 1990. This year, 1990. Yeah. <laughs> when does come we're out? talking about the 90 with an S on the end. 94. So when's 94? We, we have four more four, years. Anyway, point is. Years. Is that it felt so bad it took that long? They're just coming out with VR again. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to explain that. Okay. It took it because it was so atrocious and un user friendly and blocky and stupid and dumb and, and just shitty that it jaded people for that long. Sci it takes scientists. All right. It's crazy. And also, it's recreational. Yeah. All right. Scientists got a lot more important shit to worry about than fucking making you feel good. All right. Why? Because they're trying to make you live longer and all that shit. Yeah. All right. But the point is, it, it took because of how bad it did. Scientists were jaded for so long. Then more important fucking shit to do. It took that long for someone who was interested in the recreational fucking feel good of VR to be like, all right, well, let's take another crack at this. It's just crazy. And of course, uh, now, and it's like they knew, like. <laughs> They had a good vision, but the technology wasn't there. Technology still not here. Let's start on making that technology be here. Because it's still not here. Dude, VR games are fucking shit. Are they really? Dude, you they're play fun. I try no, I, I, I played there, there's these weird, I played a PlayStation VR some game. Some really cool. Where well, it's like a racing game, you could look around. I the, the idea. Yeah, some of them are, so you look around really cool. your damn racing and, truck. and they can implement VR in really cool ways, but they got like, like isn't great, stupid shit. All right, listen. Isn't it great the thought of VR now? No, but I, dude, I I heard uh, when VR was blown up and then it came out with PSVR, you know, with VR for yeah. PlayStation Four. Someone said that, like Grand Theft Auto and place in VR, and I'm like, Skyrim is. Oh yeah, uh, I'm about to get to how okay. dumb and shitty that is. <laughs> uh, but like, dude, someone told me Grand Theft Auto was on Grand Theft Auto Five was VR, and that blew my fucking mind. Cause it blew my fucking mind. Cause you know Grand Theft Auto's been out for ages on PS3. Yeah. Then it came out on PS4, and I was like, hey, bro, you can go first person, and that fucking blew my fucking mind. Like you can walk around this fictional LA in yeah. first person, and everything's so fucking detailed, and it's fucking amazing, dude. Like Grand Theft Auto's been out for ages. To this day, I play it every day. Yeah. Cause like how detailed. Los Santos is, and seeing it in first person is so fucking immersive. So uh, my mind was blown at the thought of Grand Theft Auto VR. I looked into it, and it, it don't exist. <laughs> Anyways, but Skyrim VR does exist, and your hands are those stupid fucking white <laughs> fucking cartoon gloves. <laughs> you got like the Mickey Mouse glove holding a shield and a sword, and Fuck you for doing that. Ed Ray, what are your thoughts on VR? Compared to back then, I think VR would be better now because of the oversight of the technology. Yeah. No, that, that's just it. That's my only... Skyrim, people were like, oh, bro, it's kind of blotchy, and this doesn't happen, what? that doesn't happen. When it's like, I can accept that, but that you, your character has white Mickey Mouse gloves. When do you think they'll come out with a, a suit where you can feel the action in the game? Right? PS5. PS5? Fucking DualSense, bro. You ain't heard nothing about that? I guess not. The controller? You ain't... Oh, well, the DualSense is like... Yeah, I, I, it's you... not a best, but it, it, it it's crazy how... All right, look, like you're thinking like, all right, yeah, this thing does a bunch of shit in my hands, but that's just my hands feeling it, not my whole body. When you're zoning out on a video game and, and it's all so immersive in your hands... Yeah. Like you, you feel it. You feel it yeah. through your whole fucking body, dude. I you feel, feel it. it like like the whole act of like the difference between 
pulling a trigger on a gun and pulling a bow, a string back on a bow. Oh, they said that how you pull the trigger is going to affect gun <laughs> gunfire. Yeah, the yeah PS4. and bow fire. On and there, there's so much more. There's so much more. That is interesting. Like, uh, it's like I'm pretty good example. It was scalps, just... dude. And you see people selling it for like $200 more already on the fucking online. Oh, they're yeah. Scalping right. it. Oh, but it's just so like, stupid. dude, it's so immersive that it's just a controller in your hand. Yeah. But it'll change how your whole mind, <laughs> not your whole body, but you'll forget about your body and your whole mind will be so much more immersed because of what you're feeling in your hand. It's feeling in your hands. So we're going to move on to the next. I think we have two videos. We have two videos left. Two videos left is going to be. Um, all right. So we love video games. I do. Some people do not like video games. So here we go. Next video. This we have two anti-video game commercials to watch. Ready? They made those. This is literally a watch. Did you know that nine out of ten kids play video games? It's fucking Tetris, bro. What? I won! Radical! I won! <laughs> what a real game! So he killed everybody. He killed his whole class. But did you also know that video games kill. cause violence? No! Oh my god! It's time to play. For real. No! Oh, that's a crap fucking big commercial. Jesus Christ, that's the most blood I've ever seen in the commercial. Stop your children from playing Is he video pissing games on you? Now that's a pro gamer move. No, 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 no. Before this is too fake. Late. This is fake. This is fake. This is fake. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, that was fake. Okay, so no bit no commercial <laughs> on for like primetime TV or whatever the fuck. <laughs> At, that that was no. <laughs> no. And Ray, what are your thoughts on this anti-game commercial that games make people violent? What are your thoughts on that commercial on the anti-video game? Fake? It was fake. <laughs> I mean, you just found some satires, which you found. Someone made that making fun of that. That's not it. That was probably, God knows what year that was made. Could have been a couple months ago. That was satire making fun of uh, old commercials. That was not a real commercial. Does video games make people violent? <laughs> Like, that's not a real commercial. <laughs> Do video game and feel violent. No. Well, I think it makes King violent. <laughs> okay, it didn't make me. But, uh, <laughs> now you're being convoluted. No. Okay, so the, so that may have been a parody commercial. Oh my god. <laughs> so, so, I, man. so I have. Doesn't deserve a reaction if it's made to get a reaction out of you. So I have a real. I have a real. Like kind of uh, version of I, that. I have a real news story. All right. All right, so this is like the realistic version of the right. parody we just. Watched. Well, no, this is a legitimate. This is a legitimate news thing about, and you're gonna listen to the kids what they say, and we're gonna comment on their comments. I think I think it's gonna and be it's their comments on it's video gonna, games. It's gonna be a weird. It's gonna be a weird dynamic thinking about how they thought and what they're kind of blaming things on. Okay, and you may you may disagree with what they think the violence is coming. We're gonna minimize this. Uh, we're gonna minimize us. You can still hear us, uh, our voice. Obviously, if you're listening to the podcast and not on the video version. You're going to hear us no matter what. But here we go. We're going to play. This is a four-minute video. So tell me when to pause. We can comment on as it goes. Officials tell it, Boston has become a victim of an electronic flight. With fewer than 600,000 people, the city has four to 5,000 video games, not just in arcades, but also in drugstores, pizza parlors, supermarkets. It's all money to in play games. In some sections of the city, uh, we have a machine or two machines and sometimes three machines in virtually every single corner store in a neighborhood. Wait a second. City officials today announced that video games yeah, no longer will be yeah, licensed in residential areas, only in commercial and industrial neighborhoods. Officials say they are responding to complaints from parents that children have skipped school or stolen money to play the games and made a nuisance of themselves. Senior citizens have rights. They have rights to go into the laundromat and wash their the laundry in peace. They don't have to go by two or three machines or kids congregating and passing fast remarks as they walk in and terrorizing them in some instances as they go in. Under the new regulations, licenses for about half the video games already in Boston are unlikely to be renewed. 
including those in the basement of the South Boston Martial Arts Academy. The reason um, we requested to have video games is so we could bring in extra money so we could allow those kids that are out in our neighborhoods that can't afford to come. When they don't have something to do, when they're walking the streets, that's when problems are created, not because of machines. The lack of machines causes problems. You're always talking about this demeaning kid, uh, making kids' minds like vegetables. Talk about them out on the street, smoking pot. One MIT study of more than 800 video game players found no basis in fact for an underlying fear expressed by parents during public hearings that video games lead to violence. Though a conclusive study has yet to be conducted, Boston went ahead with its restrictive rules. The industry plans to fight City Hall in court. There have been skirmishes before as smaller communities acted, but now a full-scale battle has been joined between the video game industry and its opponents. Steve Young, CBS News, <laughs> Boston. <laughs> That a fantasy martial arts game. Now, getting a rated R movie just hit with fatalities. Carol Lynn joins us live Except now from North Ridge with more on that story. Carol? Here it is, Bob, behind me. It's called Mortal Kombat. And we're going to talk to Aaron Brandis here about the game. Aaron, how does it work? Well, basically, you pick a couple characters, you do maneuvers on the joysticks and buttons, you do, uh, you do moves, and, and whoever you're trying wins. to get to. Fatality? Nah, there's a master guy you got to beat at the end. Fatalities are just what happens if like you really Like a real <laughs> Mortal Kombat <laughs> fan would have been way up stuff. in detail. Like, like, oh, bro, game, like Sub-Zero, like, fucking freezes your spine and then shatters it, yeah. and then rips your fucking <laughs> skull off? <laughs> yeah, oh, look, they're showing it. Oh, it's so graphic, but they can show it on the evening news. Mortal Kombat, the most popular video game in history. Kids <laughs> relish their victory and their bloody choice. Should they pull out their opponent's heart? Or simply rip his head off just to see his spinal cord dangle at a for mature yeah. adults, you but also 13 and older. Yeah, what's up with that? Uh, After a $2 million dollar advertising campaign, Mortal Kombat, debuting in Hollywood today, is expected to sell 2 Ooh, million Congress copies at $50 yeah, a pop. A horrifying possibility for parents who can't believe the game makers are fantasizing Probably about moderate. decapitation also, and murder. I don't think they'll have this at home. Well, yeah. I think so. Oh, a little bit too violent. You look a little startled. Yeah, it's a little too Hillary did the video games. That's pretty right. bad. I mean, that, yeah. That's just plain gross. <laughs> Furthermore, advanced technology <laughs> allows digitized and she was like, video inspired. real like, martial I'm arts I'm actors to make it on their ass. We watched enough to be able to conclude, to talk about this this subject what they're talking about yeah the uh, oldest subject in the book basically what are your thoughts about this what are your thoughts that the kids said that uh you can be watching the pot users <laughs> the pot users well i don't I, I could barely hear what he said i mean like all i heard was something about video games and pot users oh he said they're going to mess with us but why don't i mess with the kids walking around smoking pot uh they're one and the same <laughs> you know? they go hand in hand I do not play video games without pot. So, what are your thoughts on that? On that news? On that news thing? Was it kind of like, do you, don't you feel like the news was kind of trying to bait the, bait the idea that video games are bad? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, video games were innovative back in the day, and of course, news companies want to find a way to make it look worse than it actually is. I mean, the worse it actually is, the more people get concerned. The more they watch the news, the more money the news makes. The more money the news makes. Yeah, and the more people end up getting this information, many of them are going to say, whoa, wait a minute, maybe I want to try this or something. How crazy is it that we went from a news story like this, where like an obviously left-leaning news news show to a new here. story. Well, they came out here about Talk. How everyone is so excited for the next Mortal Kombat movie. No, how everyone, <laughs> no, I mean, you go from this to like how video games may cause violence, they're bad video games. Oh, look, oh, you can cause fatalities in Mortal now, Kombat. So the most now, important thing in 2020 is the PS5 and Xbox series. No, yeah, and, and the news people promoting Ninja are fucking, you know, video game streamers. You know where video games you can make like money to play in video money games. slaughtering fucks. Is that weird? No. Is it? Is it? Is it? I mean, how crazy is it that we went from it's not very, video games are evil to maybe they are evil if we can make money off of them? I don't know. Yeah, you know, they that's weird. Evil. It's like they weren't evil then. They are, they are fucking now. I know. Yeah. And now that they're promoted by fucking mainstream media, it's like you can make money playing video games. Stay home. COVID's gonna kill you. Dude, <laughs> nothing makes me more upset to find out that someone is out there paying all their bills and living an extravagant lifestyle. I was just playing Fortnite. Fuck them. <laughs> but that's just our opinion. Fuck them. And that's fine.
Because all we have here are... For a fuck them. Opinions, video games, and beer. We are a millions in